I am the Director General of, of Catholic Health Association of India. Uh, maybe you can call the CEO or I am, I am, I am the executive of that. We have a board <coughs> above me. I report to a board. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my role. Well, uh, in India, if you are a doctor, um, you, you are financially secure and uh, you have a status in the society. And you can get married to a beautiful girl from a good family. <laughs> so that's, those were the reasons I went for uh, medical studies. But when I was in, in, in final year MBBS, I had uh, an experience uh, that changed uh, the direction of my life. <coughs> so when I was in, uh, uh, we were posted in the obstetric gynecology ward. And we were a batch of six uh, students, medical students. That's the way we, we learn. Yes. So we were supposed to take the case of this, a case study and present to the professor. So I was examining this pregnant lady. She was uh, full term. Uh, usually when you examine a pregnant lady, your uh, focus is on that particular organ. This time it's the tummy. You know, so I was figuring out where the head is, the back is, you know, <coughs> whether it will be normal delivery. Yeah. That day I happened to look at the face of this lady and she was weeping. So I could not continue the examination and I <coughs> got into a conversation with her. And this is a summary of what she said. Uh, she told me um, uh, that this is my first baby. You're moving this baby. I don't know what will happen to this baby. Uh, you're poking your fingers into my tummy and it's paining. Not just one, one, no, one after the other no, students, you're doing that. And it's paining. Uh, and also I'm a woman and uh, it, it's a general ward, it's, it's a government medical college. It's not like this place, yeah. there's no privacy and <clears throat> a lot of poor people come there. She was a very poor uh, lady. Then she said, uh, <clears throat> you're exposing my big tummy and I'm lying down in front of others without privacy. You know, Men are also there. It's very embarrassing for me. Then she asked me if I am your own sister, you know, will, will this the way you treat me. <clears throat> so that was a blow on my face. I could not continue the conversation. As I walked out of the ward, my vision was blurred. You know, I could not uh, see clearly because there was a thin film of tears in my eyes. <clears throat> but today I know that it was the beginning of a journey. <clears throat> so I went for medicine uh, for the, all, all the usual reasons which I said. Mm -hmm. But I think from there onwards I, I started praying and reflecting and asking uh, some fundamental questions and started developing a sense of mission and uh, as it grew <clears throat> at one stage I felt that probably God is calling me to a larger family and I have to be fully available for this mission and that's how I, I decided to become a priest um, that's it that's a combination of doctor and being a priest <laughs> uh, it's Catholic Health Association of India <clears throat> it's a network of more than 3,500 uh, institutions. 80% of them are small health centers run by sister nurses in, in the remote part of the country in India where usually doctors are not there. So, and uh, the rest of rest are secondary care centers and tertiary centers. So we have, uh, we, we are involved in uh, right from primary health care to tertiary care to medical education in almost every aspect of healthcare. So we are, we are the largest non-governmental health, health network in India, probably in the world, <coughs> one of the largest. I am primarily here for the launch of uh, Sister Dr. Mary Glory Scholars Program. It, it, it's a combined program between University of Melbourne and uh, Vincent, St. Vincent's Health. Uh, Sister Dr. Mary Glory is the, she's an Australian doctor, you know that, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so she, she, in the 1920s, she left Australia. She was a very uh, successful medical practitioner here, as you know. She was uh, working in St. Vincent's. She studied in uh, Melbourne University. And in 1920s, she <clears throat> came to India in a place called Guntur and uh, became a JMJ nun, sister. And she, she spent the rest of her life in, in, in India. In 1943, she started this uh, organization, Catholic, uh, that time it was called Catholic Hospital Association. 
So it, it began with, uh, along with 15 other sisters from different congregations, she started this. Um, so she's our founder. And I'm so glad that uh, uh, University of Melbourne and St. Vincent's have initiated this. Through this, we will be sending some of our sisters or maybe some people who are associated with us uh, for leadership building uh, and also training in various areas so that they can come back and contribute to our network. We are also, uh, since we are a huge network and our strength is in the grassroots, we do a lot of work. Uh, so we are also exploring possibilities of placements from here because the strength of the University of Melbourne and uh, St. Vincent's is more of a research you know, uh, training. <clears throat> so we are trying to see how we can uh, contribute to each other and uh, benefit from that experience. Yeah. That's what I am primarily for. Uh, but in this process I am getting a lot of opportunity to meet a lot of people, significant people, mm -hmm. and that's helping. Sickness and suffering makes you vulnerable, you know? and that's the time you need uh, uh, comfort, consolation, healing, and that's the time you are open to God, uh, and that's the time you are you are asking fundamental questions, you know, what is wrong with me, or why is this happening to me, or what will happen to me, you know, after this. I think that that's a great opportunity uh, for us to uh, comfort people, heal people, and if possible, you know help them to rediscover hope, you know, and God. Uh, so that's what, that's what we are also trying to do. Uh, and I think in, in, in a developed country like Australia, um, uh, you are able to practice this uh, much more than, you know, we are able to do it because we have a lot of challenges there. It's not easy because to some extent it depends upon the doctors, the nurses, um, and many a times they may not be um, trained or they may not be aware of uh, these kind of core values. Yeah. Um, so uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, this is a great opportunity, you know, uh, the healing ministry of Jesus or uh, the healing mission. So um, how do we uh, together uh, sustain the core values of uh, this healing mission? And how do we deal with the challenges uh, together so that we can make a difference in the lives of individuals and also the society.